Uh, yeah, and to be honest, Paul, there. I every time I think, man, it would be nice to ask Paul this question, then I realize, what's an answer going to do for me? You know, it, it's <laughs> you know, great. You got the answer. Now what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sooner or later, if you listen. Uh, it's going to lead you to having no questions, not because you you don't want to know. You realize you're net you you're never going to know. Yeah, it becomes sort of an absolute. Because to me, the the expression of non duality negates all of our movements in a way. Yeah, so because our movements in an interpretation are starting from where we're not trying to arrive at where we already are yeah so obviously to get over that uh, assumption it needs to be negated and not fed yeah because you hear the message and after a while you realize that the answer is asking the question you know and in a way the questions can be de uh, delaying the sense of being the answer yeah so there's a lot going on but it's usually going in one direction, which is negation. So when people learn a lot about themselves and they feel like they're finally telling the truth about me, the real truth about me is I'm not that. Yes. Yeah. So if it's me, who wants to know the whole truth about it? Yeah. This is the problem. It's already there's a cognitive dissonance when there's the act of being identified as me the me doesn't want to know all about me. It may know, want, want to know a lot about you and them and there, but it has a real uh, distaste for finding out a lot about it itself because obviously, inherently, it doesn't exist, yeah? Yeah, it has to appear. It's almost like a skim on, on a bubble. It has to appear on the bubble, yeah? And instead of having a lot of attention and interest on the bubble, it likes to suck up the interest and attention to the skim, yeah, to this little blemish, so to speak. And so you become the whole world when in a sense you are the whole world, but you become the whole world in a really weird mental mutated way, yes? So like we say in AA, you're not much, but you're all that you think about. It just goes like that. So this message has a different direction uh, than any other I ever heard, yeah? And uh, because its topic is uh, you are already that which you're looking for, yeah? There's an assumption in non-duality that Ramana Maharshi presents a lot, which is being ourselves reality, yeah? It's not, it's not saying you were once reality and you have to reclaim that reality through the 84 Herculean tasks you must complete. It's, it's a present tense statement, yeah? Being ourselves reality, the greatest mystery is reality wanting to attain reality, yeah? So this is the basic conundrum of non-duality. Why non-duality arose was because of this assumption that we started as a long-lasting, independent, separate thing, and maybe we're working to try to become an unthing. yeah? But when that's the case, if you're assuming to be something that you're not, trying to be something else reinforces the something that you're not, yeah? Don't you see it? You'll get a feel of it, yeah? So, I had many examples. One of the later ones was uh, I was involved with a group up around the Course of Miracles. And uh, these people, there was a lot of demonstration, a lot of Kundalini, a lot of energy and everything. And it became obvious to me that the obstacle was body identification. Yeah. So there was a lesson in the Course of Miracles. It's a, it has a lesson a day. And the lesson in the Course of Miracles was, uh, I am not a body, I am free, for I am as, as just as God created me. 
Yeah. And so you would, so I was sort of chanting this thing a lot, trying to get that message. I'm not a body, but then it was revealed. The only thing that would be chanting, it's not a body is a body identification. So <laughs> my wanting to get out of something was reinforcing or wanting to get out of something was reinforcing the idea of being in it. Now this happens quite a lot, yeah? This is why there's a certain aberration in the way we uh, arrive at seeking that allows the seeking to be used to reinforce the exact opposite of what we're hoping to find through the seeking. <laughs> so, if this doesn't just happen once, it happens over and over and over again. And when you see it from the mental logic, it seems like paradoxical. You don't know why you can't figure it out, but because you're trying to figure out something that actually works from a failed system. When you see the mental logic from somewhere else, you'll see how insane it is. When you're seemingly in it, it makes sense. But when you're out of it, it's totally insane. So these aberrations keep appearing or keep repeating in time, yes? So the seeker and the sort seems to be how the game looks like. We look like we're looking from a position called the seeker and somewhere in the future or in another dimension or in the authenticness of my own condition, there is the sort. So. The seeker is established and the seeker is now going to seek an activity and find the sort with the hopes that all seeking would end if they found the sort. <laughs> but it's the sort that is being used to seek the sort. Yeah. I'm going to spell it S O U G H T. Is that the way? Yes. Instead of S W O R D, because some people I know thought all these years I was saying the seeker and the sword, but it's the sword, S O U G H T, not S W O R D. The seeker and the sword. Yeah. Now, if the sword is being used to seek itself, yeah, sit with that. Yeah. If the sort is being used to seek itself, uh, what's going to happen? Well, <laughs> you've probably been through a lot of it already because that's exactly what was happening for most of us. Yeah. So when we ran into the statement by Hoang Po, uh, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha it became very uncomfortable because that you had a sense that's what you've been doing this whole time. <laughs> you've been identified, you've been living as if you're something other than the Buddha, which does not take away the Buddha nature. And in, in, a, in a, a true sense, you've been using the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Yeah. And if you don't get it with the Buddha and you have, you can get into uh differences no jesus or that all right you can't use mind to seek mind so big m so you can't use the mind to seek the sort mind yes because the sort mind is what's being used to seek the sort mind <laughs> this is the assumption of non-duality if it doesn't go for you shop somewhere else for a while it's going to end up you'll probably after you get a lot of something, you're going to really see the value of nothing, and then you'll end up at non-duality. It's like an empty store. <laughs> it's not no sales. It's the same, same all the time. Nothing's new in non-duality. It's just nothing. It's empty. It's empty of any meaning. This is what happens. It leaves us with our, our meaning, not ours, but the meanings the head is giving everything start sticking out like sore thumbs. And if you don't get the subtle message, you'll get the fucking root awakening. You will. Yeah. And what's going to cushion your fall will be the understanding that you've heard in non-duality. Yeah. Because the, the understanding of non-duality is what's looking is what you're looking for. The seeker, you know, the seeker is the sort. The sort 
is being used to see. Yeah. What's seeing is what's looking. Yeah. What's seeing is what's looking is just the claiming of being a one that's seeing, and that's called looking. And it's a it's a form of looking called self-centeredness. So what does what does that self-centeredness form appear as? Everything that I see, I see as it pertains to me, the me that I'm not. Yeah. Whatever. See, the GPS hasn't failed. It's doing its job perfectly. It's misleading us. We think it's failed, but the system itself is a huge success. <laughs> it fails us. It keeps referring everything back to us, and it keeps reinforcing where we're leaving based on all of his presentations of the journeys we're on. But the where we where we believe we start is the bogus position. Yes. You see that if you see this, it's going to be disarming. You're not going to be called to arms. You're not going to gird your loins and have to go out to battle. The fucking thing, the war is over. It's like you're, you, you're liberated from the need to be liberated. Yeah. Yeah. It's glorious, really. You can really stop on a dime, like almost any second of the day. A pause is available. You just stop, yeah. And then there's shit, and then things happen, and shit goes on, and people visit and don't go, and this and that. But stop a nanosecond. There you are, yeah you have something reliable to fall upon and also to look from, yeah? And what you see is what you're not, yeah? That's all. And then that, it fortifies, uh, you know how the head has it that what's appearing is about us, yeah? And it convinces, there's a convincing of something that we are that which is being talked about and ruminated over and all this. Can you imagine a switching of the meaning and when, when now what's seen and what's referring back to you, you see the you that's referring to as not you. It's just that simple, yeah? So instead, instead of saying yay, it's a nay, yeah? It's a negation. It's not a denial. It's just instead of saying yay, like every time stuff was was revealed and then it was, and it's all about crescendo me. No, you let it be all about you and it shows it's not you. This is the message of non-duality. You stick it in there, yeah? And instead of just taking everything to be about you, you start seeing that it's not about you, yeah? Yeah. And you know something? You're on to something. And a momentum builds. Yeah. It does. And that was that epiphany that you wanted it to stabilize, that peak experience, that awakening that you wanted it to stabilize. You see, all those wishes were from an underlying stabilizing point, our inherent condition. We want the surface to be calm. Yeah, but the surface is volatile. It's manifesting. It's happening in a dualistic manner, calm and stormy, sunny, rainy. Yeah, but the underlying, nothing's being moved. The underlying condition that we are is not being moved by the surface activities. Yeah, and this can bubble up to the surface and allow you to travel lighter on the surface because you're not living in the surface. What you're living from is the deep. You're appearing in the surface. Yes? Yeah. So here we are, another... I mean, how many times can this guy talk about nothing forever? Yeah. It's the most interesting topic. It is. It's the most interesting topic. And it works, yeah. Negation works. 
what happens when that lion, like we always have that story, the old Indian story, not Native American, East Indian, the story about the lion cub and uh, and uh, the mother dying and the lion cub, it gets orphaned and it really doesn't know what's going on and falls upon a herd of sheep, the sheep sort of uh, uh, bring it into the herd. It starts living as a sheep as, to the best of its ability. It feels weird quite a lot, but it just keeps going. And then one day an old lion comes into the area and sees the situation and just runs after the sheep to get something to eat and sees in the corner of its eye that another lion's joining the hunt, but then it realizes that lion's running with the sheep. So it veers off, tackles the young lion, the young lion rolls on his back and says, oh, Mr. Lion. Now, this young lion had heard about a lions. Yeah, it did. They told stories about how lions have eaten a lot of sheep. So it recognizes the lion. It just doesn't recognize itself as a lion. It's taking itself to be a sheep. Yeah. So the old lion gets perplexed, doesn't say anything, drags the young lion to the water hole, sticks both the heads out, and the young lion sees the reflections and gets it. Yeah. And then the old lion goes roar. The young lion doesn't have to sign up for three months of roaring classes. It roars. Had it roared before? No, it was barring a lot, trying to bar, but it hadn't roared. Could it roar? Yes. It was an unsuspected inner resource because it was being obscured and obstructed and the possibilities of being a lion were so dwindled down because it was a sheep that was thinking about it, yeah? So what happens? The young lion gets it, but what happens when the old lion splits? And the young lion can't keep gazing into the water. It's got to do something. And it starts leaving the, the pond. And then the self the, the mental state kicks in. And now the, the sheep programming claims that event that the lion seemed to be a part of at the waterhole and says, I had an incredible lion experience as a sheep. Yeah. So that revelation got neutered by the arising of the mental state. To me, that second aspect is the more important aspect, yes? Because some of us, the old lion can't stay around, yeah? And you may not be at a water hole every time, all, to, all the day. There's gotta be a knowledge that you're a lion somewhere before you have to have or achieve or acquire knowledge. There's gotta be a knowing of that I am, not shrouded with the idea it's Paul, but I am, yeah? That sense of existing, yeah? Plain and simple. What, how that gets established, because it's already established, but how here it gets established, in my experience, was through negation of the arising of the sheep program, yeah? I had the free sample. I had already seen my original face, so to speak. What I needed was an understanding about what the mental state does. And it's going to rise no matter what. And it's not based on your condition. You are totally free from it, but the programming isn't. The programming is mechanical. There's no you, innocent you choosing. It's mechanical. As long as you're on, it's on, yeah? You're what gives it the electricity to do its thing. So it's claiming whatever happens, a big awakening, it will claim the big awakening. And then it will tell a story to fit the story that it already is involved with, which is your sheep, yes? Without knowing that, it can be so subtle, it's almost as if before the, the hand and there was a glove. So you could tell when the hand was out of the glove. Now you got like a translucent flesh covered glove and you're thinking it's you. You're the one who woke up. Yeah. So this to me seemed to be more important. And I was just going to satsang and I had this thing happening and I realized, you know, something was off. 
and then I could read stuff in Ramana's teaching. And I, he would say this important thing that seemed to be what I was feeling in many different ways, but always prefaced with the problem or the greatest mystery. So I paid attention to it. And the one I stuck with was this one example, which is there's the mental state in a sense is presupposing that a non-existent thing is existing. This is a non-existent thing, yeah? that is not existing. The bulb isn't the light, yeah? The filaments are, ca are causing the light. The bulb is something else. So the body is being lit up. The body's not lighting itself up, yeah? So there's this presupposing of this non-existent thing, this body being existing, which is mis misconstruing the sense of I am and calling it I am Paul. Truly, really? How could Paul be remembered by a sense? It has to be relying upon a sense that's never needed to be remembered, which is the I am. The I am is a sense. It's like a knowing before you know anything else. And the mental state has put a flagpole in there with a banner called Paul. So it's using the presence you are to, to validate an imaginary presence of Paul. And it reinforces it, not with the I am, but with I was Paul and I will be Paul. So it uses time and pictures Paul as a historical doer in the past and worries about Paul as a historical doer in the future, and that historical doer is pictured as a body. Yeah. So that all the obsessions would have one object they can go around. The object is not the body that's obsessed. It's obsessed. Uh, the obsession is over being the doer, the thinker, the feeler, the taster, the toucher, the liver, not the organ, but the person living. That's the obsession. It, it, gives all those activities as an attribute of the body. So it, the obsession is around the body, yes? Most people's heads hate the body, tell you the truth, don't they? They hate the way it looks, they hate the way it keeps them down. They wanted to fly, they can't fly. They wanted to jump or they wanted to dunk, they can't get off the ground. They're not happy with the body, but it's essential for the fucking story, yes? All those attributes of a non-thing have to be attributed to a thing, yeah? And the thing is the body, which is the non-existent thing. Now taken to be existing. What happens there? Then the non-existent thing taken to be existing wants to get salvation or wants to get awakening or wants to get enlightenment as the non-existent thing. And then it goes, if that's the case, and the assumption is that's the case, the spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? That stopped me in my tracks, yes? That was a much more intimate description of what's been going on here than a historical biography of where I was born, what school I went to, what color of my eyes, shit like that, yeah? That was much more of a freaking description of what I felt was going on than the, all these stories of what I did and I should have done all that, yeah? I feel much more clear and intimate with a description as a verb than as a noun, completely, yeah? And the noun is the non-existent thing, and the verb is what's existing, yes? Life is seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. It's not an interpretation of see or hear or feel or taste or touch her, yes? That's what's, jeez. Mm. So that's the invitation. You walked into this spiritual shoe store. We put out some shoes. 
If they fit, wear them. Yeah. If they fit, wear them. If the statement, whatever can be perceived, cannot be perceiving, sounds like, wait a minute. Because when it's compared to what my head is totally based on, which is what can be perceived is what's perceiving. That's the whole story. They're totally, there's never, they're not gonna meet. It's not gonna be a kumbaya moment, yeah? They're completely different. They're a completely different platform. One is being, no time, one is time, and wasing and willing. It's just completely freaking different. Now, the hearing of one is out is in that unbelievable silence, yes, which can be as loud as loud can be. But and the hearing of the other has been has turned into an addictive listening to it, yeah, ad nauseum, yes. Ad nauseum. We have it as as an action figure that was had a pronounced addictive element. We're the most flamboyant examples <laughs> of any life run on this interpretive way, how hardly it's going to be a success. Not because of anything other than it's an interpretation. It doesn't matter how good the interpretation is or how bad it is. The dilemma is it's an interpretation. And there's something going on called living. <laughs> this isn't about we're going to give you the greatest interpretation that you could ever have. And if you come back every six months, will reinforce that interpretation and you'll have the greatest story about any life that have ever been lived. No, it's the interpretation itself. If listened to, seems to have the ability to obscure what could never be obscured. Yeah? Seems to. In other words, it's appearing. Yeah? It's appearing. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't pack a wallop it doesn't mean a lot of things, but it is the highest level it can reach is appearance only. Yes. But the thing is, it has to appear real to us. Yeah. So that should lend you a little suspicion. You may be what you're looking for. If you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has, and that means nothing else is giving anything a meaning because everything in all is pretty absolute, I guess you're it. Yeah. <laughs> Tag. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, when you used to play that and you'd run and the person would tag you, but you say, no, you didn't tag me. This is like the head. You've already been tagged. There's a knowledge already in place. The head is just acting as if it got away. Yes. It's all done. This isn't. Nothing could have ever happened to change this to produce a need to change it back, yes? This is the ultimate message, is like in the Course of Miracle, I need do nothing, yeah? I need do nothing. This isn't something you chant. This is an observation, yeah? This is an, this, you observe, the truth working shit out and you come to a conclusion, I need do nothing. It's not something you do chanting it all day. That would be doing something. It's a recognition, I need do nothing. Does Is there gonna be a lot of doing? Yes. Yes. But I need do nothing. Well, that sounds paradoxical, only to wrong thinking, yeah? There can be a lot of doing with no doer. <laughs> Again, <laughs> realizing you're not the doer doesn't stop doing. There's never been a doer. And it, a lot of doing was going on anyway. Yes? <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm sure many of us have been coming here. 
And uh, I'm sure the atmosphere that they seem to be in is lighter. Yeah. Some things dance with you. Take the next step, you know, whatever. You mean relax more? Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. But hey, thanks. Mike, come on. Uh, come on. Hey, uh, we're ready for a hand. Es Esther's hand is up. Paul. Yes. I had a revelation exposing in my mind a crime that I committed, a sex crime I committed when I was 10. And I pursued it to the police and they told me that it was the statute of limitations was up and I have nothing to be concerned about. But if it wasn't for listening to the Ramtha teachings um, for February, I wouldn't have allowed that ugliness that I had stuffed down for all these years, 44 years or more, um, and if I hadn't heard you tonight, I would have thought that I had to, that I was failing myself because the doctor that I wanted to use for a psychiatrist to replace the one that's leaving said he's not accepting patients. And when I read his mission statement tonight, after he told me that I really felt a loss. Um, but like you said, there are a lot of doings. There were a lot of doings these last couple of days. Um, and there still are. And I wanted a little um, pointing tomorrow at 2.30. I have a social security SSI conversation. And I finally, with a lot of doings, found a lawyer who talked to me about what I should be doing with that person, mostly listening. But I just wanted to um, hear you guide me um, because there's a lot of, um, I guess there's a sense of wanting something from social security. I want more money. Um, I wanna tell them about things that I own so that they're, when my mom passes, they won't say that it wasn't mine and stuff like that. Um, but I also want just to be with the person in the present moment and just hear what they want to share with me about themselves if, since it's a holy encounter really in my mind so if you can give me any pointers um greatly appreciated well i, I we tend to sort of uh sort of stay on topic and point in one way uh of i don't know I don't know about uh, what to do. Well, I no, that the what to do has been be good to prepare a little bit. <laughs> I I have and I am prepared, but I don't want to lose the um the the non duality aspect of the whole experience, which is nothing's happening. Um, I, there I need do nothing, and um, I am what I'm looking for, and I just want to stay in 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 congruency yeah. with that well the thing then is just to rest assured that you can't leave where you're at so just walk in and like it doesn't it say in the course uh you know the attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability <laughs> yes so why not just uh have a sense of okayness uh you know yeah and walk in and take your cues from there Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm not a, a I'm not a, a like how to go. I'm not an advisor to go how to go to an interview. <laughs> no, I, I didn't try to mean avoid that. Interviews as much as possible. I but, didn't uh, mean that. But I know, I know. But to me, uh, the best I can offer is what we do here, and and then I hope because. What we're speaking of here will influence everything. It may not look like it goes from A to B, but it will influence the whole alphabet. So I'm much more important to me. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. And then there's a lot of people who are very good at skillful means. Yes. And they know, take a breathe deep before you go in, drop your shoulders, all this stuff. And, and uh, that's as valid as anything else. But that's, you know, like someone, Mike said, uh, you know, I came here because he's heard I'm a card salesman. Yeah. So we, we, we sell card, you know, in a way. Yeah. And then, well, uh, I but, wanted uh, to say, I wanted to say the best that, then, you know, <laughs> I wanted to say that your, that your talk tonight really, really hit home. And, and I, I, I really basically just got everything I needed from your introduction tonight. So I just want to thank you so much. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, see, I, I, I found a way of life in recovery that taught me a lot of how to deal with life successfully with, you know, the, and dealing with life successfully isn't meaning that there's always successes, it's failures and successes, but dealing with life successfully and, able, and being able to fit myself around circumstances instead of constantly trying to fit them around me. And I learned a lot of ways of how to deal with life as it appears a day at a time through recovery, AA, and the principles and the suggestions. And that's how I, uh, you know, like in me as, a, as an action figure, I wasn't that worried about overdosing and all this shit. What scared me was sitting with someone who was unconditionally loving me. That was sort of unbearable. Or going to job interviews, which was a rare occasion. But those things were much more uh, confronting than getting fucking overdosing and running around like crazy. That was easy. So I had to learn how to live life when I got sober. And I followed the suggestions of recovery and the principles and they've been pretty solid in how to deal with things and my old behaviors leaked out yes yeah I, i'm uh whatever but um what's cool is if all of my master plans don't work i end up being accountable for them yes so i don't have to bitch to other people and whatever <laughs> i was just thinking i wanted to get something for free and then I get caught. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so uh, I'm a student when it comes to, you know, how to f you know, write out, forget a resume, but whatever, <laughs> how to write anything out or anything. I need people to come over and help me. So, but uh, yeah feeling uh well, well please consider satisfied and content i'm pretty good at so i can tell you about that maybe please yeah. consider me someone you can turn to with help with writing because i was an english major all right honey i try to avoid it as much as possible and i'm good with resumes and cover letters and recommendation letters if you ever need i'm hoping one. my resume days are over i don't think <laughs> i've ever had a resume i had a i had a uh a conviction thing I had a lot of charges in my life. Me too. Me <laughs> that too. was my resume. I've Me never too. had a resume, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I just, I've flown up by the seat of my pants, you know. <laughs> Me too. So it's, I'm just, just uh, <laughs> I remember some people, they call me for like relationship advice. I said, I wouldn't listen to me. That's, don't, <laughs> don't, uh, I have, I'm a card salesman. That's it. I just swear. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Well, we love this card salesman. A lot of other topics. Yeah. We love yeah. this card salesman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yep. Thank you, Esther. Thank yeah. You. And our support and love's there. And uh, yes. Yeah. Just uh, this satsang is a like a a very very. Loving bomb, B A L M. I'm surprised because this has been a laboratory experiment in my life. The Zoom and a guy, our friend David, put these things up at first, asked me if we would do it. 
Then we said, we decide we do the ones we used to do live uh, on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And I've observed a lot of uh, stuff just sitting and looking through these squares at the people here over the years now. And uh, a whole lot has downloaded. It doesn't need to be no, uh, noted, but it's there about uh, the transformative power of satsang, just satsang, just sitting and hearing and listening, not being the hearer and the listener, just hearing and listening. It goes a long way to, uh, to sort of like blunt uh, sharp edges and stuff. Yeah, without an intention to do that. It just seems to do shit without any intention, really. And uh, yeah, so I've been really, I'm, I'm just once again humbled into an incredible amount of AWE concerning that which is here, you know, and, and it's manifesting or appearing through all of us. It's just puts me on my literal knees all the time. It's just incredible. Yeah. So, and, you know, I've been, I've had the joy of be, my head being proved to be wrong thousands and thousands of times. And uh, what a short, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just short sighted and it's got aberrations. It won't admit, and it's not to be relied upon. It just doesn't work. So uh, yeah. So, thank you. And uh, all right, Mike, anyone else? Thanks, Esther. Yes, we have ham and cheese under Jesus. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese went, uh, took a break for a little while. Nice to see him back. All right, ham and cheese. I did take a little bit of a break. I had to move. I moved into a really nice little house and uh, you know, got a nice slider glass door out to the pool. And it was just amazing. Great. Uh, fantastic there's that yeah things happen man yeah. but you know and they also said my little joke here today is ham and cheese indicted because i said that they, you can actually indict a ham and, a ham sandwich so that's if you heard that saying um oh. anyway um so my question is this is that uh had a sponsee and he went back out you know I had known him for a while. He had like six, seven months. He was doing really good. He didn't do his four step. His mom died. Da, 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 da. And uh <clears throat> you know, and I've explained a lot of what we talk about to him. And I actually gave him a copy of Under Arrest. So he read it. He loved it. Yeah. You know? So I think he might be on his way back. And I'm just wondering if there might be some something that might help him and would help me too but um there's that and then um well let's answer that first before i okay. forget obviously commitments and service positions yeah that's very helpful you get a commitment and show up and and uh and then you know meet others on in the program yeah yes mm -hmm. yes definitely and service yeah because really what happens is the head is orbiting around this ideation mm -hmm. yeah and it's in a groove and it sort of can go through a whole day staying in that groove and when it does, it can be very, very punishing in a sense. And it's like a marathon runner in a closet. And you don't know it in a way. And you're thinking as if the thinking is going to bring you out of it, but it doesn't bring you out of it. So but here's what here's this is really weird because here's what he said. He says, yep, I get up in the morning and I just, you know, I don't want to drink. I say it the night before. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then all of a sudden he's doing it and he couldn't figure for some reason, he couldn't figure that out. And it's like, you know, you got to be more conscious of what you're doing. You have to be more awake is what I could, you know, it's like, I don't know what, what more emphasis, you know, besides support from AA, 
Well, that's yeah. the steps. The steps yeah. whole point is this uh, is a spiritual awakening. And that's the point of the steps after having had a spiritual awakening. That's the point. So right. what would be a spiritual awakening? Something would be more pronounced from moment to moment than the mental state. Yeah. So you'd have uh, a balance. There would be a different balance. So you wouldn't keep falling back into the old habits. The new habits would be galvanize, galvanizing a new way. That's what happens. Yes. So, right. yeah. Yeah. And it's habitual. It's, it's a groove. And the interest is so overlapping in self, you have no idea of, uh, of it's like saran wrap wrapped around your head, like 50 sheets. You can still say you can see, but you're not seeing anything too clearly. Yeah. yeah. This, this selfing uh, refers back to itself a lot with right. a lot of ways. The basic way is the claiming of everything to imply it's someone, but it does it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And sometimes the best antidote is just to have a fucking commitment. So yeah. tension has to be out of that orbit because you're making the coffee or you're, and you want to, you know, you want to have some self-esteem. Uh, this dude is showing coffee. up half hour early every night. You know, he, he would bring his, uh, his granddaughter. Yeah, do the same thing, the same it's thing. Like, and this time maybe it, it, the, the needle will jump over that groove and the yeah. song of sobriety will continue to play. That's right. it. That's what we do. Yeah. I know. That's, that's it. You know, it's, it's up to him. But yeah, what? so, you know, there's another old timer. He's got, probably got about 25 years in there and they know each other, but they didn't have each other's number. So when I saw John today, I gave him his number to give him a shout, you know, give him a little more support and maybe we can get him back in. Because I'm thinking, he's, I'm thinking he is a, a little bit anxious to get in, you know, get back. So, great, yes, yeah. Well, sometimes that's awesome. the best convincer. Just like you know, our friend Don O finally realized he didn't know have to go up to another retreat by going to a retreat. Yeah. So this right. is what happens. Right. people go out so to drink. Again I did they, something here. Here's something else. Um, I, I don't want to take too much time with but um this girl Sarah <laughs> I met her at the meeting and she's fresh out of jail. She's you know, she's she's a tough little girl, right? And swears and swears off and gets mad at everybody for everything. Oh my the guy at the piss test didn't have change for a hundred, blah blah blah. Right? <laughs> she said she had something else at her other at her house, you know, she's all pissed off. And I was like, you know, so I, I sent her a text <laughs> and I used part of your book and it was page, uh, what is it? Page 100 in uh, Escape to Everywhere. And it says, a few people give much attention to nothingness. The thing it has no value. Those nothingness is a freedom from appearance. Here's the message consciousness that's all there is you're conscious all there is is consciousness you're conscious all there is is consciousness you're conscious all there is is consciousness ding i'm conscious no all there is is consciousness i'm consciousness no all there is is consciousness i'm conscious no all there is is consciousness ding if all there is is consciousness there's no room for a me fucking brilliant right yes. then it goes on be conscious that's it that's the message all yeah, your dilemmas uh, are based on being conscious as a me, not, and you're not that, so that's your solution. But I don't want that solution. Fine, let's discuss it. No, there's no point to debate. It's an invitation. If you find a value in it, great. Otherwise, keep shopping. You're going to be constantly seeking some relief from the, from the me you think you are. The me yeah. is the broadcasting, all the suffering. That's where all the eminent, eminence from. You want to get relief while you hold on to that you'll be busy whatever relief you apply to it will run out and you'll need to look for more 
the me is the petri dish this is this this is gold right here the me is the petri dish where all the suffering is given life and sustenance <laughs> yes yeah. Yeah, and that that prolongs like, the part of the way suffering is prolonged is by the wish that it would stop. That's how it goes. It's a fundamental law, aberration of the mental activity. If you saw it like when people are in a hospital bed and they're there, there's a machine that shows there all these things, and then sometimes it flat lines, but when it's showing it these things going up by having knowledge of self by hearing satsang and the understanding of non-duality it brings into stark contrast and you can read that thing that's going like this and you can read it's wanting to get out is a real is a reinforcing of an imagined you in yes it just goes on and on so now instead of looking at life and just taking the blows and living a consequential level, you can see it, see it. And that may open up something. I would hate to describe it because it's indescribable. And I would never want to rob people from their, from the, uh, the revelations of the awakeness that they already are. I wouldn't, man. It's right. Beautiful. So here's the other, here's another part of that. It's like, um, then we got to move on after that. Oh, All right. Okay. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, you see, know, I told her that that was a simple fix to her problems. And then <laughs> I probably pissed her off as this because I said, you might want to go apologize to the, post, to the uh, probation officer and stuff. You know, you might feel yes. better. You know, you might fucking feel better. You know? But so, hey, you know, the system, uh, that way she's looking at things may royally fail and in the program that will be a great success yeah right. she'll finally lose faith in that which doesn't have any <laughs> that's unreliable really right false that's advertising the beauty of it so she's gonna have her come up and uh, her rude awakenings just like we all have had rude awakenings yeah because uh I'm, we, just, I'm just hoping yeah. she's not too pissed off at me you know what I mean? um, yeah. I'm, waiting, not, I'm waiting to see someone else this is the point yes yeah so, yeah it just goes on and on and on and there's no uh if if we are awareness this is the assumption of non-duality it's not mine but awareness is what we are whatever that may mean to you, let's say a brilliant emptiness. So that awareness can become aware of what's going on. And a lot of what you become aware of is what you used to look from. You started, you started on a platform and non-duality questions that platform. And then all the solid foundation you assumed and constantly referred and inferred to it, you recognize it's quite fucking shaky. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it's beautiful when it comes down because you're still here. Yeah. yeah. You didn't start there and you're not going to end there. Yeah. You sure. don't begin or end like a great Zen master Bankio he would have his little trick, which was talking about us as the unborn. Yes. So, and some people would say, what were you 10 minutes before you were born? Yes. Because the, yes. Yes. So these things are just, it wasn't a, a pretty sight. <laughs> just a, it's things that just allow you to like move outside the box that you're, you're comfortably living in because it's a box. It's a box made of right angles. It's a fucking, it's it's claustrophobic, really. It truly is. That's why we're always seeking. We want to get out of something, but it's got us trapped because we're not in it. This is the dilemma. Yeah. So everyone's more interested in going to a meeting where they're talking about ways of getting out. This meeting is just questioning, are you in? That's all. That's the difference. Yes. 
And sometimes people share here, they want to get out of something. Yeah. And in a way, all right. But the appropriate, the aspect of this message is questioning the in. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the great wisdom of no escape is just that. There's no escape from an imaginary place. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So wow. that's yeah. it. See? What's appearing to be real isn't real. Yeah. It isn't. Yeah, it's the all one to love the it's highest. All false. Every, can make. Everything is false, right? It's, I mean, pretty of much. Of course it is because it's a thing in a way. We're seeing it. We're the only reality there is, and not as an individual Paul, but as awareness. Yes. Everything else is appearing in awareness it's of awareness but it's not appearing as awareness it's appearing as a thing or it's appearing as this or that so it's it is awareness but it's not awareness yeah. how it appears is not awareness right. what's appearing is awareness exactly but how it appears isn't awareness because this is what we're making up the the mind is when we see it as soon as we see it we make it up we make it up before we see it it's projected and then there's a seeing of it as if it's real it's projected first as the course of miracles says for the people who love the course it says mind projects and then this perceives yeah so the action figure perceives what mind has projected what's mind projecting dreaming that's it yes yeah. This is the perception of dreaming. Yeah. Giving it a relevance of being real because and then getting that relevance back to say this is real. So the perceiving infers a reality where there isn't one. This is dreaming. That means all of it is dreaming. Everything and all of it has been given meaning. Yeah. So everything here is an uncaused effect. You're afraid of the tiger, but it's a tiger in a dream or in dreaming. So in a fact, what you're afraid of is a meaning you've given something because the tiger isn't real, yes? So basically, we're the dreaming. Now it's impossible, impossible and not, advised to try to fucking grok it or understand it. The action figure has a pay scale. This is way beyond the action figure's inability to, it can't even fucking, you change one of the dates of the talks, it puts people into confusion. This is sort of beyond us, yes? Yeah. But you can get a sense that this is dreaming because of how meanings have changed to such an extreme that something that you thought was the worst thing that ever happened for maybe years, suddenly over time, or maybe a shorter bit of time is seen as the best thing that ever happened. Obviously, it wasn't the worst thing, nor is it the best thing. It's no thing. That's why it can see to be it can be seen as the best thing or the worst thing. If it was a thing in and of itself, it would impose its thingness on you. Yeah, it would impose its thingness on you, but it's all empty. So you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has because it doesn't have an inherent meaning except empty of an inherent meaning as an appearance. Yes, right. as, as non-appearance, it's everything. But as an appearance, it's empty of an inherent meaning. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So this is it. So, but so what? Do I want to know more? No, that's more than enough. Yes. <laughs> I can see that I'm having a subjective experience mm -hmm. that is claimed as an object. Yes. That is the essence of duality, personally called dualism. That's what's negated. So the whole premise of Paul and how Paul is and how Paul isn't is negated by the message of non-duality. Not denied as from Paul or as Paul, negated the whole enchilada. Yes? And then you see 
how the system reacts. And hopefully now the understanding of non-duality has brought it into stark contrast and you'll see the squirming of what you call all your devices trying to get a hold of something and you'll realize they're not your devices. Yes? Yeah. You don't have to intellectually get it. You don't have to understand it. You're not going to experience it. You can't own it. You can't lose it. Yes? This is what happens. So all the, all the ways you attempt to get it fail. And instead of like being totally bummed out, it's hallelujah. Yeah? Freaking hallelujah. Yes? So the gun is put down not to be picked up again. It's disarming, disarming, freeing, freeing from that need to be liberated, free from the need to be liberated, free from the need to get it, free from the need to stabilize it, free from the need to keep, keep working on it, free from the need of all this stuff, yes? Just chilled out, yeah? Chilled out, fucking, you know. Yeah. Yeah, just like, you know, you never lift, left Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, basically. Yeah, I'm not yeah. looking to go to the 11th dimension or take a con concoction and meet alien entities who are going to tell me something. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's great. I have no interest in it. Man, wow. I've heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is going to be the greatest journey. I'm done with journeys. Yeah. Here I am. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Man. Yeah, let's move on. I'm happy to see you, ham and cheese. Yeah. Thank you I very thank much. You. I really, really appreciate you so much, man. All right, no problem. Yeah. You ready for John Andrano? Sure, John. Yeah. Yes. No one showed up. Great. You're muted, John. That's John all right. I had him sitting. John forgot he was John there. Let's leave him at peace. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, point. He forgot. Thank God. I did. Yeah. Um, no, honestly, it was weird. I kind of I had this question in my head and I feel like you kind of answered it as I was thinking about it, which just coincidentally, but it's about the dreaming. But I'm going to just go ahead anyway, because so. OK, so I, I studied the course for a few years and that was like, of course, I'd always heard this idea that like it's all a dream. Right. You know, and so. And it started to congeal during the course period of my life or whatever. But then I stopped doing the course for reasons. I think I just wasn't ready for it. And more time passed. And then I got really heavily into lucid dreaming, you know, and, yeah. uh, and just in general, you know, my paid a lot of attention to my dreams, did all this lucid dreaming stuff. And, you know, ultimately it was another side trip, you know, like I, I understand it was more seeking, but it, what was interesting is I did really kind of start to see, I was like, wow, like I went from thinking like, you know, I would read people say, oh, all this is like a dream to being like, oh, it really is very fucking dreamlike. Like, you know, like I'm remembering things, I'm interacting with some sort of construction inside my mind. I'm thinking about the future. And I'm not actually experiencing a thing that's going on around me. I'm not in direct contact with what's happening to me. But there was always this thing that bothered me because I started to really pay attention to what was going on in dreams. And it's like there, there was this one important difference that seemed to stand out. It was like, and I'm just going to give an example. It's like when I'm dreaming in you know, my sleep, Okay, like if I leave a room and turn around, I might turn around and not go back into the same room, you know, whereas like when I'm awake, like and dreaming or whatever, if you want to call it that, like when I'm awake, if I leave the room and I come back, 
you know, like it's basically the same room. Sure, the furniture could be moved around or whatever while I turned around, but like, I guess there's like a, and I know it's only apparent. I know there, I do understand that there's things are constantly changing, but there's more like consistency yes. to when we're awake. So, like, yeah. I don't know, but then you said that thing about the emptiness and the meaning, and that really seemed to kind of answer the question that I think I'm posing. But still, like, I wish you could just like riff. On it. Like, well, you know, let's I'm say you now. went to the first of all, it's it's dreaming to me. I don't like the idea of a dream because then uh, again we fixate on the dreams we have at night. Yeah, which, as you said, you just pointed out seeming contrary differences in the awake dreaming yeah yeah because okay. the head is going works on comparison that's why i don't like the word dream okay I like dreaming which is very inclusive all right okay. so let's say we go to the dreaming store and you're this is the first time you're going to work with virtual reality so you're a novice so they yeah. give you the one called the night dream yeah, okay. but you're gonna it's gonna all be held comfortably with this this event called waking up in, in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then all right, you play around with that one and then you always get out of it because you wake up in the morning and oh you know, yes. It, it was oh, all a dream. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you have the chance it was all a dream. All right, all right. What's down that aisle? Oh, I don't know, bro. That's the advanced stage of dreaming. That's going to be really, really convincing. Ah, oh, come on. It's just like the dream, isn't it? Well, yeah, but so that's the awake dream. That's, that's fooled billions, billions of customers. But hey, if you're up for it, sure. Yeah. I, well, Sure, let's let's give it a shot. I mean, I've 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 you know, in terms of, <laughs> oh man, I got so I got to tell you, hang on. So I don't know. I'd like to share this. So I had so I haven't been doing lucid dreaming in terms of like you know I did all these things to kind of make me have lucid dreams or whatever. And but I had a spontaneous one recently that I thought was kind of funny. Okay, so because because it reminded me of the emperor has no no clothes. So okay, so I'm at work in this dream. OK, and I, I work in pest control. I have to wear a uniform. It's a real specific uniform. Keeps me from getting chemicals on myself and stuff. OK, so in this dream, I look down and I'm not wearing the right pants. And but I had been. So I was like, oh, that's weird. You know, I'm like, just so I'm like, oh, hang on. I got to go find my pants. I go find my pants. I put the pants on. I look down and wearing the wrong pants again. I'm like, well, that's that's weird. And then I finally I'm like, so I look down. And I'm wearing these jeans and I'm like, well, at least that's going to protect me from the chemicals. Fine. Finally, like I'm walking, I go into the client's house. I look down, I'm totally naked. <laughs> and I realize I'm dreaming. <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah. And I wake up, I woke up and the first thing I thought of was the emperor has no clothes, you know, just, <laughs> yeah. I was like, so yeah, but it was, it was a weird dream. But but they're, all, a they're all fucking weird, man. I'll tell you this though, most people, when they talk to me about dreams, there's still uh, consistent definitions. They're mostly dreaming of bodies, yeah? Yes. They're seeing things. So that gives me a hint that it's, uh, it's, it's in the realm of the mental processes, yes? Right. Maybe even say the brain. Because you have the same format in the awake dream, which is bodies and shit, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So that always made me question stuff, is that because the overriding, uh, see, the, see the pattern or, the, or the, the big commonality is, is the way you see through stuff at times. Mm -hmm. I have a bogusness concerning dreams because of they're defined as a, a, a world of bodies and stuff. Yeah. Yes? So that gives me a certain disinterest in it all. Well, 
and the other thing is people I because you know when I got was really into them I talked to people and people were always like oh you can have lucid dreams like oh wow like it's a superpower or something but people would always be like what do you think dreams mean and I started to come to the like after a while I was like yeah sure I could have a dream and go be like oh hey it's because I had that argument with somebody or whatever but like dreams really honestly after a while I was like they don't really seem to mean a hell of a lot they seem pretty and I think it's the trickster yeah yeah i do i really do i think there's there's no trickster but you know what i mean uh there's there's a humongous humor around <laughs> in wherever this field is yeah and we end up being the butt of a lot of jokes <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so i uh that whole idea that most of the time I'm dreaming, you never see yourself much as a body, but everything else you're seeing is embodied usually, yeah? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, right. It's got so like that, a boundary that, that, that takes up space. That turns me off quickly in a way, because that seems to be coming from the same factory. <laughs> you know, the emphasis yeah. on things and stuff. So, because I really believe what is doesn't uh is no thing you know yeah so whatever thanks bro i think we're yeah. gonna end soon this has been an interesting thank everyone. you yeah and uh mike anyone else so we'll just say good night yeah no other hands up all right great all right well uh, <laughs> nor nice yeah. to see you Hi. amelia nice <laughs> i know Lola, Lola's been very good. She's looking for us. Oh, hi, Lola. She has memory. She has memory uh, food. She's looking for things she's once seen. <laughs> uh, it's similar to us, really. So, all right, we got. Uh, let's see. We got John. We just went on to dreamscaping with him. We got Mike. Thank you, Mike, for everything and. The support and doing the, these meetings. We got William there. Nice to see William, Bill C, Bill Churchman, David down under. We got Greg in Minneapolis, Kathleen at the uh, the uh, Lazy Boy Factory. Yes. <laughs> we got ham and cheese, maybe needs a little mayonnaise, but there you go. Mia down under. I don't know what the hell she's doing, but there she is. Nice to see you, Mia. Philip from Brisbane, nice to see you, Phil. Robert from, oh, good, nice to see Robert from New Zealand, pleasure. Nice to see Robert French. Giselle in Las Vegas, nice to see you, hon. Alan, yep, he's got a good way to get the message, yeah, laying down. Walter, we got Kerry Klein and Kelly, nice to see both of you, yeah. Lindy, Gary Clark. Hey, I had a I had a pleasure hanging out with Gary and his wife up in in uh, Auburn. Nice to see Auburn. you. It's great, thank you. Yes, very nice. Thanks. It's good to see you, John K. We got Miranda. Yes, there she is. Nice to see you, hon. We got Craig May. Craig May. Craig's corner. Yes. We got Marty. <laughs> Marty, you like the wet Wi-Fi? Volume's good, quality, yes. Super. Oh, good, thank you. We got Irene, nice to see Irene. Mike M, oh, and Zoe just appeared where Irene once was, that's wild. Uh, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got Kathleen, we got Rob M. Nice to see you, Rob, yeah. Madi, Craig, let's see, I got Raj Mahal, John L, Susanna W, nice to see Susan K, got your latte money, Lebowski's back, yes, he tried to bounce a check for 69 cents, he sent to Zen Bitchla, I tried to cash it, there was no money backing it up, all right, okay, uh, let's see, I think that's it. Mia, everyone, thank you so much for it's all of us that make this activity go. So thank you, Paul. 
Thanks for our participation, and I'll see you soon. Thank oh, there's you. Laurie. There's Laurie. Thank you so Thank much, you. Laurie. Thank Good you, night, everyone. Thanks so much. Laurie. Thank see you. you Saturday. Thank Saturday. You and tomorrow Bye, morning. Nor. Yeah. And Bye, Sicily. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Mike. Sicily. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Bye, Mike. Bye, Lola. Good night, guys. Hey, hold on hey. one second. Hold on. Hi, Amelia. We have that trip to Sicily going to happen in October. Amelia is the is the uh, runs the thing. So if you're interested, check it out on the website. And we're going to need. Uh, Do you know how much the flights are at now? the end of April? Hmm? April twentieth. April twentieth. Yeah. We'd like to see to get the money uh, so that we. So are we by? Is it a group uh, flight? No, no, the flights are all going to be off, but we'll pick you up at the airport and then we're together and there'll be two talks a day and a number of days. There's excursions. There's a couple one day, is, I think we take off. It's in in, in Sicily at a, a big hotel, but they're going to give us our own little space, I think. And uh, it'll be beautiful there. We had a last year we was we so were what in do you think the total cost would be. I think With it's it's parents. up on the website. You can take a look for single or double bed and uh no no, I know those prices. I'm just wondering have you got any ballpark on what the uh airfare is? Oh no, I would think it's gonna be better than because it's in October, so it should come down. It yeah, from. and it depends where you're coming from. But we right. got there pretty cheap last year and uh from San Francisco you can take a direct flight now to Rome. And then there's a flight from Rome to this uh, small uh, airport near where we're going to be. All right. All right. Yeah. But we'll talk yeah. about it. It's all there. You can get in touch with Amelia. And <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Yeah. Thank Bye. you.